Right, in this video we're going to uh, discuss graphing linear equations. All right, so we begin with uh, discussing equations with two variables. All right, so it looks something, you know, like y equals negative 2x minus 1 or uh, 3x minus 5y equals 7 you know, things like that. You have equations that have two variables uh, in them. Right? And usually it's x and y. All right? For, for what our purposes, it's going to be x and y. All right, so here's a note. A solution of an equation in two variables is an ordered pair, x, y, remember ordered pairs, that make the equation true. So the ordered pair is going to, when you plug in the x value for x and y value for y, you get a true statement. So for example, is 1, negative 3 a solution of y equals negative 2x minus 1. Well to determine that we know that x is 1 and y is negative 3 so we're literally going to substitute 1 in for x and negative 3 in for y. So you say negative 3 equals negative 2 times 1 minus 1 and then you simplify that up to see if you get a true statement. Negative 3 equals negative 2 minus 1 negative 3 equals negative 3 that's true so yes 1, negative 3 is a solution of this equation. But is it the only one? What about negative 1 half 0? Is negative 1 half 0 a solution? Well, x is negative 1 half this time, y is 0, so plug in 0 for y, negative 1 half for x, there's the negative 1 half, minus 1, so 0 equals negative 2 times negative 1 half is 1, 1 minus 1 is indeed 0, so yes, this is also a solution. All right, so that's something different. Here we have a, an equation, y equals negative 2x minus 1, and it has two solutions. Turns out it actually has an infinite number of solutions. We'll talk more about that in just, uh, in just a minute. What about, say, 2, negative 4? Is it a solution? Well, when you plug in uh, 2 for x and negative 4 for y, you say negative 4 equals negative 4 minus 1, negative 4 equals negative 5, that's false. So no, 2, negative 4 is not a solution. So that's, that's how you determine if an ordered pair is a solution to an equation with two variables or not. All right? Here are a couple notes. Now we're going to talk about linear equations. A linear equation is any equation that can be written in the form y equals mx plus b, where m and b are real numbers. m is just the coefficient of x here, and b is just the number down here by, by itself. So uh, m and b are just real numbers. So like we had a minute ago, with y equals negative 2x minus 1. That is a linear equation, because it's of that it's of that form. Uh, the m is negative 2, the b is negative 1. Those things will come into play a little bit later, but right now it's just uh, that, hey, yeah, that's, that's of that form. All right? Now, make note the graph of a linear equation always graphs to be a line. All right? So that's what we're going to be doing next. The graph of a linear equation is a line. Okay, so let's look at if y equals 4x plus 1 we need to figure out how to be able to graph lines. Well, uh, the first thing we want to make note is that when we have an equation written in this form, y equals 4x plus 1, for example here, the y, the value for y, uh, we say depends on the value of x. So if we knew a value for x, we could plug in that value for x, multiply it by 4, add 1 to it, and then that would tell us what the y would be. So y's kind that would be easier than doing it the other way, plugging in a number for y and then doing a bunch of uh, algebra to get the x by itself, right? right so uh, we refer to, when, when equations are written of this form, we, we refer to the, to the x here as the independent variable. And y is called the dependent variable. All right, so x is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable, because y, the value of y, literally depends on the value we put in for x. So we come up to this side, we want to say find y when x is a certain number. So I'm just going to choose 2, for example. So we want to find the value for y when x equals 2. And that literally means we're going to take the 2 and substitute in for x here, do the arithmetic on it, and let it tell us what the y value is. So we would have y equals 4 times 2 plus 1, so y equals 8 plus 1, so y equals 9. 
So when x is 2 here for this equation, the y value is 9. We've literally just made an ordered pair 2 comma 9. Right? When x is 2 and y is 9, this equation here is a true statement. So the ordered pair 2, 9 is a solution to that equation. What about say when x is 0? Right? You take 0, plug it in for x here, right? and we've got um, y equals 4 times 0 plus 1, so y equals 1. So that's the ordered pair 0, comma 1. So we're able to find ordered pairs that make this equation true just by choosing a value for x. Just choose a number for x, plug it in for x, do the arithmetic on it, and let it tell you what the y value is going to be. Right? Another way that we're going to think about this creating ordered pairs is by making what's called a t-chart because, brilliantly enough, it looks like a t. Right? So we're going to have the left column be x, the right column be y, and Using the examples we've already done, we say when x is 2, y is 9. When x is 0, y is 1. Right? What about, say, when x is um, negative 1 fourth? Right? When x is negative 1 fourth. So take negative 1 fourth, plug it in for x, you get 4 times negative 1 fourth. That's negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so y has to be 0. We literally could sit here forever and find ordered pairs that make this equation true. Right, because there are an infinite number of ordered pairs that make this particular equation um, true. All right, so now how do we use these ordered pairs to help us graph? All right, so we just go over here to the to the xy plane, uh, the uh, Cartesian coordinate system, and just plot your ordered pairs. You know, two comma nine would be go ahead or two, and then up nine. Two comma nine would be right there, and then zero one would be right there. And then negative one fourth zero, that's a little harder to plot, right? Because uh, negative one fourth, you know, if this is negative one, negative one fourth is here somewhere. That's harder to do. But keep in mind, we know that if we have a linear equation, the graph is going to be a line. And therefore, all we need are two ordered pairs, two points, you know, f uh, to, uh, to make a line. So we've got our two points and plot them and we connect the dots, right? And there's the equation of our line, okay? So you can also think of this x and y as input and output, right? So x would be the input value and y would be the output value uh, in our equation here. Again, the, the y is dependent on whatever value we put in for x, so you just get this, this other way you can think about it. Input, we're going to input 2 in for x and the output for y is going to be 9, for example. Right? So find a couple of ordered pairs because you have a linear equation, plot those ordered pairs and then, and then connect the dots to graph your line. All right? Let's look at another one. All right, let's graph y equals negative 3x plus 2. First thing you want to do is notice what type of an equation it is. And it's a linear equation, y equals negative 3x plus 2. It's of the form we're, we're looking for, as opposed to, say, something like um, y equals negative 3x squared plus 2. These are not the same. Everybody see that? This is an x squared ring around in it. This over here in red on the right here does not graph to be a line. Right? It is not of the form y equals mx plus b because the x over here is an exponent of 1, right? And y is an exponent of 1. But over here on the, on the right, we've got an exponent of 2 on the, on the x variable. So this over here, while we can still graph it, it does not graph to be a line. We'll discuss those um, later. All right, so just let's go back to our linear equation. So since it's a linear equation, we know it's going to graph to be a line. Since it's going to graph to be a line, we know we just need two points. For those things that are not linear equations, they need more than two points. For lines, we just need two. All right, so start by choosing some numbers for, for x, and then let that tell you what y is going to be. So for example, let's let x be 0. If x is 0, you get 0 times negative 3. That's 0, and 0 plus 2 is 2. So the ordered pair 0, 2 is a solution, right? What about, say, if x equals 1? If x equals 1, you plug 1 in for x, you get negative 3 times 1 plus 2. So y equals negative 3 plus 2. y equals negative 1. So when x is 1, y is negative 1. And again, we could sit here all day, but since we know this is a linear equation, the graph has to be a line. We only need to get those two points. So now go over here to your x and y plane and plot each of those ordered pairs. So 0, 2 would be there, and 1, 
negative one would be there. And then you connect the dots. All right? Make sense? Notice this one, this line's going down. As we, as we regress from left to right, this one's going down. The previous one, the, the graph was going up, remember? All right, let's try one more. Let's try this one. Y equals 1 half X minus 2. All right now, notice again, it's a linear equation, so the graph is going to be a line, so we just need a couple of ordered pairs. So when you do your t-chart though, remember you can choose pretty much any any numbers you want to choose from. You don't have to start with 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and go in order like that. You know, We can choose any real number that we want here. Since this is a 1 half out in front here, choosing 1 probably wouldn't be a very good idea. right? Because you'd have 1 half times 1, which is a half, and then subtract that from 2, and you got you get this fraction you're going to have to plot over here on your graph paper. Now that, that's, not, that's not easy to do. So if we don't have to do that, we try to avoid it. So I'm going to choose a number, I'm going to choose numbers for x that, that divide um, evenly by 2, right? Uh, so for example, if x is 0, we get 1 half times 0 is 0, y is negative 2. That one's pretty easy. But now instead of using 1, I'm going to use the number 2. Why? Because 1 half times 2 is 1. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Everybody see that? Okay, so 4 would be a good number, negative 2 would be a good number to choose for x, negative 6, any even number in this case. You know, if this was 1 third in, instead of the 1 half, then 3, 6, 9, any of those numbers that are divisible by your 3 there would be, would be wise numbers to choose. So choose wisely when you're making your t-chart. Alright, so let's go over and, and plot our points. So we have 0, negative 2 would be there, and 2 negative 1 would be there, right? And if you chose, for example, negative 2, uh, 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1, and negative 1 minus 2 would be negative 3. So you would just have this point over here, negative 2, I see that, negative 2, negative 3. Right? And notice it stays, it stays on our line, right? Again, we can sit here all day, picking numbers for x, letting it tell us what y is supposed to be, go plotting them, they're all going to fall onto this line. Now, what this line, what these lines represent are all the ordered pairs that make this given equation true. So we can't possibly list all the ordered pairs because there are an infinite number of ordered pairs that make this true. Right? So, but we can graph it. We can find uh, two or three points for our line here, then connect those dots, and then this, this graph, this line here, represents the infinite number of ordered pairs that there are that make this particular equation true. Do you follow me? That's what we're doing when we're graphing. When, when we're finding the graph of an equation, we're finding the picture, what the picture looks like, of all the ordered pairs that make a certain equation true. Okay? All right, let's try this one. All right, so now I've changed it up a bit. We've got 3x minus 2y equals 8. Now, one way to handle this is to rewrite it so that it is in the form y equals mx plus b. All right, so to do that, you want to isolate the y. So we'd have negative 2y, and we'll subtract 3x from both sides. So minus 3x plus 8, and then divide everything by negative 2, and we get y equals 3 halves x minus 4. Everybody see that? Divide everything by negative 2, and you get y equals 3 halves x minus 4. Alright, now find some ordered pairs. Make, make a little t-chart, x, y. So if x is 0, that's a good one to use if you can. So plug 0 in for x, you get 3 halves times 0, which is 0, 0 minus 4, negative 4. And then since we have a fraction here and the denominator is 2, I'm going to choose a number that's divisible by that denominator. So let x be 2. So you have y equals 3 halves times 2 minus 4. 3 halves times 2, the 2's go away, and you just get 3. And 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So 2, negative 1. Everybody see that? Then come over and plot it. And we have 0, negative 4, and then 2, negative 1 and then you connect the dots, because we know this is, this is of the form. It's a linear equation. This graph's going to be a line. That's why we only need to define two points. Connect the dots, and you've got the graph of this particular line. All right? Does that make sense? But again, not everything graphs to be a line, uh, only these linear equations. And we'll see some other graphs um, later. 
All right, that's it for now. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.